I'm Alex Sharfin, and this is the Momentum Podcast, made for empire builders, game changers, trailblazers, shot takers, record breakers, world makers, and creators of all kinds. Those among us who can't turn it off and don't know why anyone would want to. We challenge complacency, destroy apathy, and we are obsessed with creating momentum so we can roll over bureaucracy and make our greatest contribution. Sure, we pay attention to their rules, but only so that we can bend them break them, then rewrite them around our own will. We don't accept our destiny, we define it. We don't understand defeat because you only lose if you stop, and we don't know how. While the rest of the world strives for average and clings desperately to the status quo, we are the minority, the few, who are willing to hallucinate there could be a better future, and instead of just daydreaming of what could be, we endure the vulnerability and exposure it takes to make it real. We are the evolutionary hunters, clearly the most important people in the world, because entrepreneurs are the only source of consistent, positive human evolution, and we always will be. Today, I've had the extraordinary experience of spending uh, a ton of time with Carissa Hill, who flew over from Australia. Carissa is the CEO of the Wolf Pack Mastermind. She leads a group online of well over 10,000 entrepreneurs who um, show up to literally have coffee with her every day. It's called Coffee with Carissa, if you're interested in checking it out. I'm a member. A lot of the people I know are members. And the reason we're there is Carissa is this force of positivity and encouragement and growth and Um, she is unique in this world among entrepreneurs. And I was joking this morning on my my Insta stories. I said, I'm, I have a one day with Carissa and she's like the human unicorn. And, and I, I was joking, but only a little bit because, um, she just has this strength of personality that shows through everything she does. In fact, my youngest daughter, Kennedy, who's eight, kind of feels like Chris is a bit of a celebrity, was at our event this week talking to her and came back and told us she was sweating. She was so nervous. So Carissa, what, is, what does it feel like to be a hero like that to a little eight-year-old girl who knows you as Carissa Hill and she just, she thinks you're incredible? Oh, it feels pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a little weird at the same time, right? Yeah, it is. Like, I just feel like I was having a conversation with an eight-year-old, but obviously for her, she was a bit excited. So, yeah, I don't know, it was lovely. Yeah, so you're aware of the effect that you have on people, right? You work with people around the world. Um, they come, and in the past especially, they've come to you, they haven't really known how to put their business together, how to be successful, and you very quickly show them how to gain massive success. Um what is it like to be able to have that level of effect on people, Carissa? <sighs> this is honestly, I I really feel like sometimes I don't know what it feels like because to me it's just me being me, and I naturally just like helping people. Um, I, I love coming up with ideas. I love marketing. I love sales. I obviously love seeing the results that my clients have, but I still see myself as just just me, you know, <laughs> so I don't like to put myself up on a pedestal or anything. But um, look, it's it's really fulfilling. It's really exciting. Um, the highlight of my day is when someone comes to me and says, like, you turned my life around. Like one person said recently, like, I was eating two minute noodles before I met Carissa. And now I'm like, you know, <laughs> really successful, making heaps of money, hired people. Um, yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it's pretty amazing to have like that level of effect on people's lives. And in the past year, your business has grown tremendously, hasn't it? Let's give everybody perspective. So we're in July 2018. Let's go back a year. How how big was the business and how many people did you have? Uh, Yeah, so maybe like a little bit over a year ago, I think we did around... Well, we had a really big jump. The first year we did 200,000, then we went to... Uh, 500,000, 800,000, and now we're at 1.3 million. So that's over about three or four years. Um, but yeah, this time last year, I think I'd only just started hitting up to six figure months. Um, and now we're like doing that consistently, obviously, and they just keep growing every month. So, what has it been like the past year getting to a million dollars? I often share with entrepreneurs that. The you know when we're looking at seven figures from afar, it looks like it's the promised land. But as you approach seven figures, it, there's there's a lot of challenges there. It's like it, everything changes, everything shifts. What has it been like for you? I actually felt like it got easier. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, well, it didn't feel any like what I expected it to, of course. Like you put seven figures on a pedestal, as you said, a lot of the times and you look at, I used to look at all these people that were millionaires and have seven figure businesses and like being like, oh my God, you're so amazing. <laughs> and then I like hit seven figures and I was kind of like, well, is that it? Like what, what next? Like I reached my goal now, what do I do? So I guess in a challenging perspective, that's been my biggest challenge. I'm like, okay, so I have all this cash, like everything's going well. I've reached my goal. Now what? (laughs) Well, and today we spent a lot of time on that question. Now what? Right. So one of the reasons that you came in today was to get really clear on what you're, who you're going to help how you're going to help them, what's the change you're going to make, and then really how you're going to know you're successful. We call it the client-centric mission. But today, we got really clear on that person you're going to help. Um, It's shifted a little from the person that you've been helping, but what is that like unique characteristic that we found today that really gets you excited? I'd love for you to talk to that person right now. (sighs) Women that are obsessed with business. That's what we came down to. Like it's it's not just female entrepreneurs who want to make more money. It's like women that are just like absolutely obsessed because, and the way that I look at it is so like I'm what I call a born entrepreneur. Like I was, <laughs> and I made a joke recently. It's like, you're starting a side hustle while you're in the womb. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. Like everything, like my whole life, even my childhood, I can't help but sell things. It's like I'm, I'm just obsessed and everything I do naturally turns into a business. So that's the person that I really want to help going forward because I know for me it's been something that it's, it's felt so instinctive, it's felt so natural, but I had all of these dreams my whole life and feeling like as a woman we often feel like we have to suppress them, squash them down, not publicly talk about how successful we want to be or how successful we are. Um, And, you know, I really want to help women like that to step out of the shadows Mm -hmm. um, and step into their life and and own their success and, like, not apologise for being obsessed with business. It's cool. Yeah, Carissa, you know, we're working on this new body of content and we have been in the past year and I call it the Huntress. And it's this, it's the the recognition of the female entrepreneur who was born into this world and has never even thought about asking for equal rights, but instead has just decided to dominate. And often when I think of the Huntress, I think of you, I think of Emily Hirsch, I think of some of the clients that we have that, that Layla Hormozy, that, that are like that person where they walk into the room and there is no quest for equality. It's like, I'm going to win. And that woman has such a hard time getting permission to be who she is in today's world. Why do you think that is? I think a lot of it's fear of what people will think or say. Like for me personally, I've just seen so many other people like or women out there that they start to show off their success and someone tells them that they should be humble, not talk about how much money they're making, like they're bragging. And so for me, and I said this recently, like, when I hit a million dollars, it felt like a struggle for me to even tell my mom because I felt like I, you know, (laughs) it it was awkward. Um, And so I I think it's just a society expectation thing that like women shouldn't own their success that much. I don't know really what it is at all, but um, I want to break it. Yeah, you and I both. Because I think like what you said, you know, part of that struggle is that there's this expectation that if you're a woman who's successful in business, there's something you should be guilty about. Yeah. Right? It's like if you're successful in business, then you should be guilty about your husband, guilty about your kids, guilty about not being a proper woman, guilty about not being feminine, guilty about not showing up the right way. And so we hide, you know, men don't tend to hide their success anywhere near as much as women because of that guilt factor. Have you felt that yourself? Yeah, absolutely. I was just saying, like, I live in this amazing house now and Mm -hmm. I haven't even shown it off on Facebook because I don't want to come across as a show off. Um, (laughs) So, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, (laughs) But it's true. Like, it is a real fear that women have. And, and so, you know, me being me, I like to come up with like or realize challenges in myself act on them overcome them and then inspire other people to do the same by being the one that sets the example yeah no doubt and 
so often women not only won't set the example, like you said, they hide back in the shadows, they pull themselves back. So this year we'll, with the Wolfpack Mastermind, today we clarified the, the levels you're going to be putting out there and who you're helping, this woman who's obsessed with business. So now that you have the clarity that we went through today, how confident are you this year that when women come to you, they can actually create a business, move through the steps, build a team, and start getting the support they want for the business they've always known they wanted? I mean, that's that's the person we're talking to, right? Yeah, absolutely. So it all makes so much more sense now. Like I had the idea in my head, but I wasn't clear on exactly how to make it happen. And now it's just crystal clear. I just need to go and do it. So, Carissa, let's talk to the business owners who are out there trying to grow a company right now, to the people who are listening, they're trying to grow, because the last year for you, you've gone from 800 to 1.2. And when the year ends up, it might even be a little more than that. So the growth has been really significant. It's not easy to do that. And it certainly isn't easy to do it and make it feel like it's easier. What do you attribute that to? Like, what, what are the things that you did in your business that brought you that level of clarity and that level of momentum? Uh, I've always been really big on having really clear systems uh, for my team members and to make everything as easy as possible for them to do their job correctly. So that's a big thing that I have always done and it's a big thing that I teach my clients as well. A lot of people, I think, they have a team but they expect so much of them but the team doesn't know exactly what they should be doing or when or what's a priority and, you know, what the business needs, what the business owner expects. Um, So I always... I've always made things easy for myself my whole business life because I luckily learned when I was quite young in my first business, um, when I was 21, that you can't do it all yourself. You have to ask for help. And anytime there's something that causes you any kind of, you know, stress or frustration, like that's probably something that you shouldn't be doing. Mm -hmm. Um, If you resent anything that you have to do in your business, then you should find someone else to do that. So for me... um, that's that's a huge part of of what's helped me to grow so quickly I suppose and in a way that doesn't feel too heavy um and so that's one of the biggest things that I love helping people to do as well doesn't it make it easier for you to ask for help when you've been you because I've watched you and I, I I watch how you grow your business and it's hard for any entrepreneur to ask for help even you, like all of us, it's hard. But one of the things that I've watched with you is you you get really clear on what you want first, then you get clear on the process, then it's a lot easier to ask for help because you have a higher level of confidence the person's going to succeed. Why do so few entrepreneurs do that? It drives me nuts. Like you, you watch it in your business as well, right? Yeah, I do. I think for a lot of people, it's fear. Um, it's either a fear of trusting people. It's a fear of like a lot of people just think that no one else can do it as well as they can. Um, A lot of people see other people as not caring about their business as much as they do, Um, but usually that's not the case. It's just that they haven't provided clear enough instructions on what they expect. Um, So I can't remember what we're saying. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Carissa, let me do another question, and you have to forgive Carissa. She's been through it like an eight-hour intense experience to get through what we did today. But you brought up a point. You know, I think for a lot of us, the the struggle is huge, trying to get help, trying to, to find people to bring in. And and even for you, early on in this business, there it wasn't that easy, right? Yeah, yeah, you're right. And um, they got to a point where you encouraged me, I think it was this year, started this year, to hire an EA, um, which I didn't even know what that was. <laughs> <laughs> Executive assistant for anyone who doesn't know what that is. Um and it has changed my life. <laughs> like it's it's just taken things to a whole new level. So Josie is my executive assistant and she just takes oh, absolutely everything off my plate and I can just talk things through with her daily. Um, and I think that's probably the biggest thing. And like we have full transparency, transparency. Um, well, the whole team does now, Um but she's someone who I can just chat to about anything at any time. She reminds me of things because I forget everything if, <laughs> if it's not documented. <laughs> and um, it just it's just nice to have like, especially when you can't talk to maybe like your partner or your husband about what's going on or like your other team members about what's going on in the business from a CEO perspective or an operations perspective and having that person that's like your you know right hand man or woman um (laughs) 
just there constantly to help and she also you know implements anything that I need implemented um it's fantastic well and this is something I that's really important for me because one of the the issues I see with entrepreneurs and you did a little bit of this when you first were growing this business is that we go out and we contract a bunch of people to help on stuff we do but then what happens is we have the business to run, the contractors to manage, and the stuff that's left that we do, and it becomes increasingly overwhelming. But by letting Josie in and by having someone close to you, like for me, I always recommend entrepreneurs hire someone to help you first. Hire someone to offload what makes you uncomfortable. What is doing that? Like what is the discipline of offloading where you're uncomfortable and having Josie there to help you? How much more has that freed you up to grow the business and to be what you want to be? Yeah, like insanely, it's <laughs> it's changed everything. And like I can give you an example of something like I used to, because I'm the content creator, right? I come up with the ideas. I love teaching. I love making videos. I love creating trainings for my courses. And I love like writing content marketing posts and things. But one thing that I used to do is like come up with the, the idea for the new training that I was going to create. Then I'd film the video, upload the video, put it into the platform, email it out to everybody. Like I don't know why, but I thought that I had to do that whole thing myself until I got to a point where I'm like, huh, maybe I don't, but I don't, I don't know. Like Josie didn't know how to do it, but then this is my – like, okay, systemize it. And then, you know, I just have this – theory on just try stuff you know like some people are just afraid to try something and it's like you can always just try it and see if it works and then if it doesn't you don't have to do it again but I was like okay Josie I'm gonna record this video and then you are going to do everything else and but I always ask people I don't tell them that's a big part of it so I always for my team I'm like hey can you please help me with this um she goes yep straight on it done faster than I could do like, <laughs> that's so, so important, right? Is we have these processes, these things we do in our business and we think, I, you know, no one can do this as good as I can. And then almost immediately you offload something and you find someone who does it better than you do. You found that with Josie, right? Yeah. Yeah. She does. Cause I'm like, you know, so easily distracted. I've got shiny object syndrome. So even me doing anything, I'm like always like interrupted the whole time whereas she's such a more like focused processed person that if I give her a task to do she gets it done like you know so that could have taken me an hour to do that job it takes her like five ten minutes so let's talk to the other huntress entrepreneurs out there because here's what I've found and see if this resonates Carissa because you you work exclusively with women almost exclusively with women and what I've found is that entrepreneurs have a hard time asking for help but when it comes to women, there's almost like a block against asking for personal help. There's, there's like this, this wall about asking for anything that will make your life easier, so much so that when I observe a lot of women entrepreneurs, it almost looks like they're trying to make their life harder because they keep all the crap themselves. Do you know what I'm talking about? I have an example of that. <laughs> I have had a client recently, Deirdre, who um, she said to me, she came to me, she's like, I'm so busy in my business, but I want to make more money, but I can't. And I'm like, well, what are you doing in your personal life? Can you free up like cooking, cleaning, laundry? And she's like, but I like ironing, but I like cleaning. <laughs> I'm like, do you really? Or do you just like think that you like it? You're trying to talk yourself into it because you feel like she, she came out, she feels guilty about outsourcing her housework. She thinks that she, that's her responsibility as a woman. Um, for me, it's not like I just don't do housework. I never have. But some people do do it if they're that kind of person and they do. In, she like, fair enough, she might enjoy ironing. But she got to a point after our conversation where she was like, look, I just realized that I've spent three hours doing my housework, doing my ironing, doing my thing. And I haven't even touched my business today. Um, I could have been doing my marketing. I could have been booking people in. I could have been taking sales. I could have been servicing clients um, and, and making so much more money than, you know, the $20 an hour or whatever you'd pay someone to do your ironing. So she, that was her tipping point where she's like right and I said well, why don't you just try it you know yeah. you can always go back to not doing it but try it it doesn't some and for her she got it in her head that if she was going to do something like that it had to be a permanent change um whereas you know just try it and now she's just like why didn't I do this years <laughs> ago <laughs> well that's what I find too but I think you know something that you just brought up and it's come up the words come up again is that feeling of guilt yeah. and something I want everyone listening to think about is is when you feel that feeling of guilt, I want it to be a trigger for you to ask yourself, am I talking myself out of getting help? 
because what happens so often, especially for women, but sometimes for men too, is we feel guilty that we're not doing enough. And what we really should be feeling is we're not asking for enough help and we're not getting enough leverage and we're not doing, you, we're not offloading enough so that we can do more. So you talked a little bit about what it felt like to, to have Josie come in and, and how that's freed you up. But tell us a little bit about what it's done for you as a mom, as a wife, as just a person to have that person who's there supporting and helping you, Carissa. Oh my God. So much help as a mom, mom, <laughs> mom. Um, <laughs> It's like, so I have something, I have an idea or I think of something that I have to do and used to, I, I would used to just be like getting to this state of like, oh, I have to go and do that. And I'd go to my computer and I'd sit there for like two hours and do the thing. And now I'm just like, well, hey, Josie, I just thought of this thing that I want to do. Um, can you get this done today, please? Um, and then she'd be like, yep, on it. And then I can go spend two hours with my son <laughs> and play outside. <laughs> so <laughs> it changes everything. Yeah. yeah. Does it, do you find that not only time frees up, but even like focus and your ability to be present, your ability to like, to be there is the time you're spending with Jaden and with Travis more valuable now? Yeah, it is. And it's more meaningful. And I just, I can, I know and trust that the work is going to get done and it's going to get done the right way. And even if it's not, then you just review it and change it a little bit. Um, yeah, it's, it's like just, you know, you can't, you can't well, you can buy more time. The only way to buy more time is to outsource things. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, Carissa, this last year has been amazing, I think, uh, of working with you. We started in July of last year, so this is our year anniversary. It's pretty awesome. And um, I think that with what we did here today, this next year is going to be ridiculous. Like, I can't wait to see it. You always surprise me in these the the most amazing ways for anyone who's listened to this besides coffee with chris at your facebook group where's a good place for them to go to get more information about you find out about you if there's any women listening in the audience who are in a service business and they want to know how to grow it get more clients where should they go uh i guess just to my website that's the home base of everything it is carissahill.com.au um, but if you look up the coffee with carissa facebook group on facebook all the information is in there on the pinned post so (laughs) you can find it there so check it out go to coffee or sorry sorry go to carissahill.com.au it's an australian website and coffee with carissa as well you will not be disappointed that you did and if you're sitting there right now thinking you'd like to have more time freed up more um, time for yourself be able to create more momentum it's really a question of are you asking for enough help and do you have the systems in your life that allow you to do so Uh, Thanks for joining us today, and I look forward to talking to you again tomorrow.